All right, students. So here we've got our review sheet. I'm going to just briefly talk about some of the problems on here. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me as soon as possible, and I can make a separate video answering those questions. So when I'm looking at this first problem here, what I'm noticing is that there are two different things combining to make a total. And so that would be a standard form situation. And the two things that are combining are cups and rope. And it looks like the cup is x and the rope is y given to us right there in the problem. And there's a total of $30. So I can write the equation basically just taking the sentence and converting it into math symbols. $5 per rope, $3 per cup makes $30. 5x plus 3y equals 30. If you look at question three, it says that they purchased three packages of cups, which means that the x value is now equal to 3. And so I replace the x with 3 <clears throat> and write the rest of the equation as is. And I solve for y. This should feel very familiar. This is the sort of equation we spent a long time practicing back in unit two. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides, leaving me with, let's bring it up here, leaving me with 3y is equal to 15 and dividing by 3. Many of you could have probably figured out in your head that if you buy three packages of cups, that cost $15. So you got 15 bucks left over, and 15 bucks left over divided by $3 per meter is 5 meters of rope. But when it asks you to find your answer algebraically, all you're doing is practicing writing down that thought process there. So here is the answer to question 2. And then right below that is when I did question 3. I'm going to clear the screen and then go graph it. So our equation, once again, 5x plus 3y equals 30. Two different ways to graph it. One way is to plug in x equals 0 and plug in y equals 0 to find your x and y intercepts. And another way is to convert it to y equals mx plus b. Both are equally good. I'm going to do the x equals 0 and y equals 0 strategy. So if I do x equals 0, that leads me to have 3y equals 30, and dividing both sides by 3 tells me that my y-intercept has to be 10. So count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's my y-intercept. Now I'm going to do the same thing. If we say that y is equal to 0, then we know that 5x is equal to 30. Dividing both sides by 5 tells me that the x-intercept is 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. So then I have my y-intercept and my x-intercept. There we go. I want to mention the previous question asked us about three of x and how many of y, and I want to point out that the answer right there of three comma five is halfway in between my x and my y-intercepts. All right, that's that for the first page. Moving on to the second page. Come on, work with me. There we go. This is a big race uh, problem here where you're trying to just represent each character in terms of their speed and head starts or late starts or anything like that. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole problem, but I want you to understand that what we're doing is writing a bunch of point-slope form equations. Point-slope form looks like this. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. You can simplify a lot of these equations, but you don't really have to. Uh, you can just write the equation given the information. Like, for example, if I look at C of X and J of X, if I look at Chelsea here, C of X can run 24 yards every four seconds, and she wants a head start. So she starts there, and she starts running right at the starting gun. So you can write it like this, C of X minus 5 equals m 24 over 4 times x minus 0. And the reason I wrote it that way is because there's a 5-yard head start. That's a y value. That's why the 5 is right where the y1 was. And she ran right at the starting gun, so x is equal to 0. Now, many of you, and, and myself included, would probably prefer the equation to be written like this. 6 
oops, 6x plus 5. And I think that that's preferable for a lot of people because uh, 6x plus 5 shows that she's running 6 yards a second and has a 5-yard head start. But the other version of the equation is equally good. I'll use a different color for Jason. Jason can run 27 yards every 3 seconds, wants a 10-yard head start, and also takes off 3 seconds after the race begins. So he would be j of x minus 10 for his head start equals 27 over 3 times x minus 3. We could convert that if we wanted to, or you could just leave it as is. All right, moving on. <clears throat> you can graph them. Uh, these are just some extra practice here. I'll just go over these first two uh, problems here. Same sort of idea as before. We want to have two things combining to be a total. So question one here is going to be a standard form equation. 3x plus 4y equals 12. We need to define our variables, so think about what's unknown. The unknown is the price of an apple. Apple price. And the y unknown is the juice price. Change its slope-intercept form. So you change something to slope-intercept form by solving for the letter y. So I take my original equation, subtract 3x from both sides, because that will get rid of the x's on the left side. So I have 4y equals negative 3x plus 12. And then I divide by 4, and I get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3. We can graph that. I'm going to go in to the y-intercept of 3. Right about there. It's hard to do on the computer screen for me. And then I go down 3 over 4. Connect the dots like that. I don't go beyond that because it doesn't really make sense to talk about negative apple prices or negative juice prices. So I stay just in that top right quadrant. Next one, point slope form. Remember, point slope form, which you should have in your notes. y minus y1, m times x minus x1. So I am copying in the y value, the slope value, and the x value. And then the only thing I would really, I really do prefer you to switch a double negative to a positive. Like so. To then graph it, you go to the point 4 comma negative 2, put a dot right there. It's hard for me to get it accurate. And then a slope of 3. Go up by 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. And this one looks more or less like this. And this one I put arrows on the end because there's no reason to end the line. It goes on forever. And the last thing I'll say about this review packet is that these sorts of problems here, uh, down below with the f of x and the g of x, they're optional. They are from when we taught this a couple years ago, before COVID, we were able to get through function notation. I uh, didn't quite get through it this year. Um, if you want to try them out on the test and on the review, you can. But if you don't try them out, it won't hurt you. The basic idea is that this means plug in x equals 3. This means set the equation equal to negative 26 and solve for x. Okay? So that's it for this video. Please ask more questions, and I will make videos or answer them as soon as they come in. Thank you.